today we're going to talk about approaching a destination with Zen harmonic stepwise motion. Now, what this means is that, well, if I have a scalar passage, say, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, when I sing that passage, it ends up a perfect fifth away from its original note. So, the strategy is to change the size of the outside interval. I mean, this is already used in singing in which you're concerned about intonation by aiming and pointing. For example, if you're in choir and you're singing a certain note a little bit high, maybe the director will say, aim low on this one. You know, the director is pointing out something that you can sort of think to yourself. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. We are thinking small things to ourselves uh, in order to get used to the Zen harmonic sounds of things, but also remain within the 12 video area. So what I'm showing you is possible on a 12 tone equal tempered keyboard. We're just going to be changing step sizes around. We know what the two end points of our exercise sound like in our ear. In other words, do, re, mi, fa, so. If I wanted to sing this passage but stretch so to something else, um, I could have the something else in my head and try and aim it there. Just like you would aim something high or low in choir. And then you can stop and hold on the individual notes to really get a feel for where they are in the fabric because they don't fall on the 12 equal piano. Uh, and nor do they necessarily fall in quarter tones. These exercises are sort of meant to get you away from quarter tones. And now, most exercises that people bring up that use this method actually only cover a small distance. For example, check out Jacob Collier in this video. I've also heard it put as an exercise to choir students where if they have a note, uh, what they need to do is get to a minor second by singing 16 individual notes. It's really hard to do because if you want to sing 16 notes, the steps are very, 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 very small. Smaller than most reasonable microtonal steps you could expect to hit in performance. So you're really just thinking of the first note and the second note and you're trying to bridge the gap. So that's exactly what we'll be doing. The method I'm using to construct these exercises is I come up with a small little sequence of stepwise notes and then for a contraction, I just lower it by a minor second, and for a stretching, I just raise it by a minor second. So that's a really good margin in which to practice, is aiming a minor second low or high. If you get to a major second, then you have a situation where the entity you're practicing with is probably so fundamentally different from the solfege that you might not want to name it that. Uh, and those situations crop up all the time in harmonic music. In my opinion, this approach gets you more used to scales than simply thinking about scent derivations because then you're sort of having to do some retuning in the very immediate moment and it's not as uh, helpful as feeling the scale out and sort of knowing where all the notes are already. So, let's talk about some of these stepwise exercises. We can either have an outer interval that contracts or stretches. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sing solfege for a particular thing and then I'll describe how I want the contraction or the stretching to work. So let's go over our uh, contracted exercises first. Here for example, I want to sing do, re, mi, fa, so, but I want the so to be so low that it ends up being a tritone. So basically, I'm dividing the tritone from 12 tone equal temperament into uh, equal whole and half steps so that I can get there. Of course, our normal one goes 
Do re mi fa so. Now let's see how I do on this one. If I wanted to sing it so that there was a tritone on the outside, I could sing Do re mi fa so. There. So something like that. And then of course you're checking with the piano. So that's the part where 12 equal comes in. If you want recommendations for what kinds of tuning systems to use to check the individual steps, uh, you can talk to me about that later or comment in the video, or I will make a video about it sometime. But anyway, so that's our first exercise. And then for uh, descending exercise, uh, maybe here I'm going to sing do, ti, la, so, fa, and then when I get to fa, I want it to have contracted so much that instead of being a perfect fifth down, it'll be a tritone down. Now, one way you should do this if you're having trouble is to start by actually hearing the interval. So for the rest of these exercises, I'll just be playing the end points. This is something you can do. You can play the end points and then try and sing the exercise with either the contracted step sizes or the stretched step sizes. So I'm going to do that here. So far. And you can hear that's different from do ti la so fa. Ends up on a different note. Alright, another ascending exercise. Uh, this one's fairly easy. Uh, do re mi fa, our exercise with four notes. I want to contract it so it ends up as big as a major third. Now, of course, when I'm contracting do re mi here, it might end up so small that it actually sounds more like a minor third. Do, re, mi, fa. So there's that. And then for a con contracting exercise, I could have uh, do, ti, la, so, but then my so gets to a major third. Here, here's the normal version. Do, ti, la, so. There you go. So there's that one. So then this uh, this next ascending exercise, uh, this next ascending exercise is a little bit different. I rearrange the steps so that you actually end up on a flat five instead of a perfect fifth. Do re me fa se. So se is our flat fifth, not used very often in common practice theory or in class, uh, but. It is very important. So when I get up to say, I want it to be as small as a perfect fourth. Normally it's a tritone, here's the perfect fourth. So of course the normal version would go Do, Re, Me, Fa, Se Do, Re, Me, Fa, Se So there's that. Uh, and then descending, I've construed this as Do, Te, La, So, Fi there's lots of ways that you can rearrange the whole and the half steps in these exercises, and that's okay. So the normal version, do te la so fi. You can almost kind of think as fa me re do ti, but I'm gonna use fi, and then I want it to be a perfect fourth size. Do te la so fi. Yeah, there you go. It's hard to land that one. All right, and then as for the stretching exercises, we have do re mi fa so getting so wide that the so stretches to a minor sixth. Do re mi fa so. There you go. And then maybe a descending one, do ti la so fa, except it goes to a minor sixth instead. So far. La so far. And then we have uh, the ascending do re mi fa. Uh, by the time we get to fa, we want to end up a tritone above the tonic instead of a uh, perfect fourth. Do re mi fa. Kind of there, a little bit low. Uh, that area sort of approximates five tone equal temperament, the do re mi. So, you know, mi is getting out of a mi area. There we go. And then let's go ahead and try this next one. 
another descending exercise. I just have Do, T, La, So. But we want to get So to end up on a tritone. Do, T, La, So. There you go. Do, T, La, So. Kind of hard to get it right in between. And then for this last one, I have an ascending Do, Re, Me, Fa, Se. That's normally supposed to land on a tritone. Do, Re, Me, Fa, Se. We did that one before, but now we are stretching it. So our hope is that it lands on a perfect fifth. Se lands on a perfect fifth, and all other steps are stretched equally to accommodate. So let me play that perfect fifth in the original, just to hear it. Do, Re, Me, Fa, Se. It's close. That one's really hard. I think the stretching ones are probably harder than the contracting ones. Just my personal opinion. You'll have opinions about that, of course. Especially if you try the exercises. Okay. So for this last one, I also have Do, Te, La, So, Fi. But instead of it contracting to be a perfect fourth, it's going to expand to be a perfect fifth. Do, te, la, so, fi, so, fi. Yeah, I think that's okay. Do, te, la, so, fi, so, fi. Yeah, that's really tough. So there you go. Those are the exercises that I have for this video. Uh, don't forget to hold certain notes and compare if you're not sure. Of course, if you are using a 12-tone piano to help you with that, then you can't really check the middle notes as easily, but you can hold them and sort of draw them out and reference the original pitch. Like, for example, you can compare to 12 equal notes. Like, if I was trying to sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So again and landing on the tritone, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So. Maybe I want to check the status of where Mi is. Probably Mi is going to be significantly flat of where it normally is, so it should be in between these two notes. Do, Re, Mi, Fa. Ah, uh, no. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So. Do, Re, Mi, So, you can tell it's a little bit in between there, and you can sort of check using that in your own references. You can also practice this without solfege, and this is sort of where you enter the next level of Zen harmonic ear training. You already know the solfege to these constructs that exist in 12 tone equal temperament, but there are some Zen harmonic scales, as you can imagine, that render these uh, very, very nonsensical, or very hard to understand, or very cumbersome, and there are other systems that can better explain them. Now, the best way to describe such things is by using numbers, but as we have briefly hinted at, Thinking about numbers all the time when you're navigating a musical system can be really distracting, and it can really hinder the ear training. So you want to have a situation where you've set up a system and you can sort of abide by that system if you've worked on it enough. And that's what 12 tone equal temperament gives us. Zen harmonic systems give you that too. Now, there are whole and half steps in 12 tone equal temperament that comprise the major scale, and a whole step is twice as large as a half step. Now, when I was doing these exercises here, I'm vaguely short of shooting for whole and half steps again, but it's not a situation where it really is going to be exact. Maybe I exaggerate a little bit, and that's something that's done in 12 tone equal temperament as well. We make our leading tones smaller generally, but if we need to tune to just intonation, the leading tone is flatter so that it locks and rings with the rest of the chord. So there are little intonational differences all over. The real situation where the solfege breaks down is where you have steps that are significantly smaller than our 100 cent 12 tone equal temperate step. Like for example, if I wanted to sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, but end up on a perfect fourth, I could do that, but by then our Do, Re, Mi has become so distorted that it's not really Do, Re, Mi. So it's actually best, in my opinion, to sing step sizes. 
but instead of singing whole and half, because those uh, ratios aren't always feasible, it's really good to sing large and small instead. It's like if I just wanted to sing a regular major scale. Large, large, small, large, 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 small. And I could contextualize all these previous exercises in the same way. If I wanted to sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, I could sing it as Large, large, small, large. Large, large, small, large. Still large and small steps, it's just that they've been shrunken so that they're right on a tritone instead of on a perfect fifth. So, you could do that with Zen harmonic scales. A lot of the Zen harmonic scales that people tend to be interested in are ones that use only two kinds of step, so large and small steps. Now, there are lots of other kinds of scales, but this is really useful for those two step size sorts of things. I think those are the easiest to sing generally. So, with that in mind, I'm going to sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, but I'm going to land on a perfect fourth instead. Of course, what I'm really singing is large, large, small, large. Mm, large, large, small, large. So I'm twisting the proportions of it. with extreme, extreme distortions. So this is sort of the place where we get to where we have to think of the steps as different entities that are not whole and half steps or perhaps not close to whole and half steps. Why is this a great strategy? It's tetrachord friendly. So a lot of times we're dealing with four notes, five notes. We can deal with more if we want to, but that might be something that's a more advanced technique. We start small in ear training, and then build to other things. You can use 12-tone equal temperament intervals to figure it out. So, you know, there's no law saying that you can't practice Zen harmonic ear training with a 12-tone equal temper piano. It's just that a lot of the time, the more Zen harmonic you are, the less notes on the piano you're going to be hitting. Until you're maybe just hitting one. So... This is a good place to start, especially if you don't want to download any software or do any of that kind of work of learning what equal temperaments are or anything like that. It's just a really good exercise for your ear. It's less about numbers and more about association. Just like things are with solfege uh, or large and small kinds of steps in ear training class. Although we do use numbers in 12 tone equal temperament to ear train at advanced levels. So something can be done like that for Zen harmonic ear training. It's just that what we're talking about right now is such a general overarching principle that assigning things to different equal temperaments might be really confusing. It's a lot easier to talk about it in 12 tone equal tempered terms and then just sort of divide things accordingly. I mean, we could think about how like a tritone is divided if you were treating it as a perfect fifth and whatnot, but that's a question for regular temperament theory and a question for people who are setting the scale up, which might be you. Thank you for watching, and I hope you are helped by these strategies.